Hey guys, it's Mario here coming at you from the main beach in Playa del Carmen. It's a beautiful day here. You can see a lot of people down there having fun, having a blast on the beach. And I want to talk to you guys about something for a while now. And I got inspired and I got reminded of this actually by a post that uh, Dr. Brad Schoenfeld made recently where he said you get to pick. You can either choose exercise or you can choose disease, right? You can either pick to exercise now or you can pick to be sick later. And I actually kind of stuck with me, but I didn't pay attention to it so much at that point. I thought it was a really good post. But then again, as I was reading a lot of articles and I typically read through statistics to check out obesity rates, to check out uh, how much time we're spending cooking and things like that, just as a base for my videos to do some nutrition research and to check out the current state of society, there's a one very, very interesting statistic that I came across. And that is that in the 60s, Americans, United States, that's kind of what we use as a base for all the statistics. I don't have the stats for all the European countries. It was uh, very interesting. So Americans in 1960s spent about two and a half times more on food than they did on healthcare, right? In today's world, they're spending about two and a half times more on healthcare than on food. So food has become cheaper. Food has become usually less quality. I mean, if you look at what we're doing for our basic diet, I mean, not our diet, but let's say the standard American diet, the Western diet, what is it really? I mean, it's usually pre-prepared meals. Even if you are preparing them at home, it's usually just to reheat them or it's some kind of a quick rice or some kind of piece of meat that you just brought from a place where they deep fried it five times and now you got it at home and you uh, made dinner, right? It's not real food. It's not real ingredients, simple ingredients like it used to be back in the 60s. So the diet quality went a little bit down and also of course the availability of fast food and the availability of uh, pre-prepared foods and foods that are just ready to eat, right? You just have to eat it right then and there or it's gonna go bad. And what really happened here is that basically we have a choice, right? We have a choice to either invest right now into exercise, healthy food, veggies, fruits, lean protein, diet full of whole healthy and processed foods, or we're gonna pay that same price that we would invest for those foods for healthcare. So it's a choice, right? And every one of us has that choice. And I don't think people are aware of this. I think there's a huge illusion out there that I would say that the government or your parents or your school or the, or the system, as people like to call it, will take care of you. Right? A lot of people believe that. A lot of people believe that the FDA will protect them. And if you look at what the actual FDA is doing, I mean, it took them about uh, 35 years to ban trans fats and about 100 years to uh, finally say that margarine and hydrogenated oils aren't that good for you. 100 years. How many generations is that? How many people have had health problems because of that. And it's a slow process. I'm not blaming here the government or the, how the uh, system is inefficient, but it is uh, something that is our responsibility to educate ourselves when we're not getting that education automatically. Think about it. I mean, who is responsible? We can, of course, pass on blame, and that's what most people do. I and mean, it's a lot easier to play the victim and a lot easier just to think, well, it's not my fault. You know, I, I wash my hands from this. I don't. I don't think it's my responsibility to take care of my own body. It's the uh, Obamacare thing, you know. No, I mean, think about it for a second. Your body is your tool. You've been given this gift. You've been given this opportunity to live this life. And depending on your religion, depending on your philosophy, maybe you have multiple, maybe you have one. But let's say you have one for the most part. That's what people believe, that one time you're going to be in this state that you're in right now. And are you going to pick investing right now into living your life to the fullest by maximizing your health through proper nutrition, through proper training, through proper healthy habits, or are you gonna invest that or probably even double that or triple that amount that you would have to spend on, on those healthy things into healthcare, into being sick, into spending probably the last part of your life being in a hospital, being surrounded by nurses, having someone else to take care of you, having someone else to wipe your ass <laughs> because you can't do that anymore because now you uh, haven't invested in exercise and now your bones and your muscles are so weak. When you fell down, you break your hip and what are you gonna do? 
who's gonna take care of you, right? A lot of people, they literally die because of the fact that they can't even move anymore, right? They just don't see the purpose of them being here on this planet anymore. And it's kind of discouraging when we think about this, but I feel like most people aren't really aware of the reality that the price has to be paid, right? You have to either pay the price of investing currently, both in terms of finances in, uh, I would say, I mean, healthy food isn't that cheap. Secondly, you have to invest in exercise facilities. Of course, you can't mean, you can build a gym at home, but again, it costs money. Then it's of course, time and effort. But on the other hand, if you neglect these things, that price and that debt, I would say more, more accurately, has to be paid at some point. And of course, human nature, let's delay as much as possible to pay the price. Let's procrastinate. And funny enough, as we know from our own experience, procrastination usually comes with a huge price and it's usually triple or quadruple the amount that you would have paid just then and there. Now it's much harder and it comes with a bigger consequence now, not just for yourself, Usually when it comes to health, it's the whole family gets affected, all the people around you, all your friends. Everybody's being affected by our own negligence. And I wanted to make this video, it's a little bit of a rant, I would say. It's a little bit of a, just a different viewpoint on what the current situation is. I mean, we don't appreciate cooking anymore. We don't appreciate uh, simple foods anymore. If the food doesn't taste like the best thing in the world, we don't eat it. People on average eat about three to 400 calories more than they did in the 60s and the 70s. And you see guys and gurus and people in general, they are blaming sugar, they are blaming carbs in general, blaming fats, blaming trans fats, blaming certain diets, blaming the FDA, blaming the food pyramid, blaming someone. Nobody's looking at themselves. And what is the reality? Well, the reality is that we're just eating too much of everything. We're literally eating too much of everything. There's a hyper-production of every single item out there. The market is so competitive that the food manufacturers have to put an insane amount of flavoring into the food just to make that food palatable enough for you to buy it in the first place. You see that the food currently that you're eating probably doesn't even taste the same way it used to taste a couple of hundred years ago or even a couple of decades ago when the technology didn't exist to manipulate the flavor as much as it exists today. And you can see what, what people turn a simple salad into. The salad that tastes like tacos and cheese, right? It's not just pure green leaf salad with a little bit of tomato. No, that salad with a little bit of tomato doesn't have any taste whatsoever. And you have to add flavoring. You have to add dressing. You have to add calories. What those calories are, where typically it's just a combination of carbohydrates and fats, sugar, and fat, and also a little bit of salt, of course. I mean, you can read more about this in a book that I just, actually, uh, I'm going through right now. It's called The Dorito Effect. It's a very, very awesome book that I would highly recommend you to check out. It's kind of a different perspective of uh, why we overeat, because uh, a lot of us, we are aware of, uh, let's say, the fast food nation books or the end of overeating, where we know that the combination of uh, sugar, fat, and salt can cause food to be extremely tasty and can cause that food reward to increase meaning that we simply cannot resist the food anymore. Our circuitry that we currently have, which we have inherited from our ancestors who were hunter and gatherers, and if they would find, let's say, a bunch of honey, of course they would overeat. I mean, it's, it's food is in scarcity. They would die if they don't do that. Today's world, we have access to these types of foods, very, very high calorie density everywhere. I mean, it's gonna take me five minutes to go down the street right now and buy an ice cream. That's like 500 calories for five minutes of walking practically no effort and almost the cost is very, very low, especially if you're, let's say, currently I'm in Mexico right now, which is uh, the cost of food is very, very low. And that's what we are missing. We're missing the big picture that that availability and that environment that we're living in right now and the food itself is engineered in a way that it's creating this mismatch between our current evolution, what your body is evolved for, how it works to store fat, to prepare for a famine, and we're just living in an environment where feast is 100% of the time, 24-7, 365 days of the year, it's feast, it's celebration. There's always food. We use food to celebrate, we use food to uh, make us feel happy, we use food when, we're, when we just simply are bored. It's not even that, that it requires a cause anymore. We just use food for everything. And it's kind of a standard. I think a lot of people, when they travel, they don't even do activities anymore. They just do the Yelp list or the, tra the TripAdvisor restaurant list and just go through the whole list. 
and that's their trip. What did you do in Rome? Well, I've been in this restaurant, I've been in that restaurant, I've been here and here, I tried this ice cream, this is my favorite pizza. And, I, and I'm not saying that, that to take an extreme point and just completely eliminate all kind of uh, satisfaction from your life and leave that Spartan mindset, but this hedonistic mindset that we've fallen into without even knowing it has a price and we will pay that price. And we are paying that price right now. If you look at statistics for preventable diseases, we can see cardiovascular diseases, we can see uh, diabetes, we can see obesity, which is largely, uh, a we are able to avoid that by investing our time into building healthy habits and taking care of our nutrition. And of course, that the current state of education isn't at the level yet and I'm hoping at a certain point in time that the level of education will be at a level where you will know that if you eat this, this is the consequence. If you overeat calories, this is the consequence. These are the benefits. This is what you can do with intermittent fasting. This is how you can restrict your calories and feel less hungry. This is how you can maximize your nutrition output. This is what your one day, what your DNA says, and these are the ingredients that you should be seeking out in food to maximize your own health because we know that there's a huge part that is genetic here, but of course the research is not at that level yet. So who is responsible right now? That's a simple question. Whose responsibility is to keep you healthy? And you can bet on two things here. You can bet on the external, you can bet on the world, you can bet on the doctors, you can bet on the government, you can bet on your uh, friends, family, whoever it is out there, you can bet on them. You can place your bets on them and you can hope for the best. Second person you can bet on is yourself. Who do you think has more control over your current behavior? Who do you think has more control over your outcome in life? Well, I'm betting on the number two. You can bet on the government, sure. I think governments are awesome, but not when, you're, when we're talking about very, very specific things that you need to be doing. Nobody's gonna do your reps for you. Nobody's gonna do your push-ups for you. Nobody's gonna do uh, your meal prep for you. Nobody's tell you, gonna tell you, hey, you should probably eat this that much because you're gonna shoot your calories for the next couple of weeks and this is gonna be the outcome in 30 years. Nobody's gonna tell you that. The world is too complicated. There's too many people for the governments, for your friends and for everybody. And there's too many problems for them to be helping you with a very, very specific thing like your own diet, like your own nutrition. And for that reason, I mean, I know this video turned into a little bit of a longer one, but I wanted to point this out is just to transfer a little bit of my mindset, just to download a little bit of my thoughts, something that I'm thinking about daily, is that mismatch. And one big reason why I have this YouTube channel, one huge, huge reason why I'm putting out these videos is to try to raise that level of awareness, that level of knowledge that a person watching this has when it comes to nutrition. Because I think we can prevent a lot of, a lot of misfortune. We can get a lot more out of our lives if we just figure out this one little thing. And the system's already there. The knowledge is already there. We know what the consequences are. We know how to fix this. We know which foods to eat. It's not a matter of knowledge anymore. Now it's a matter of awareness, mindfulness, and application. And I think this is something that a lot of us could work on more for ourselves, but also pointing this out to others and sharing. You don't have to share my video. I don't, I don't care if you don't share my video, right? I'm putting out the video. People who appreciate it, they're gonna share, they, they'll like it. Some people won't resonate with this. They're gonna just say, okay, it's Mario guy. He doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. Uh, he doesn't have a PhD doctor degree in this uh, thing. Right, sure, I don't. But if you do resonate with this and if you think that it is your responsibility, if you think that you should take control over this, then think about it for a second and see how that will lead to a certain outcome in your life. Think about how your current decisions are leading you and what path are you going into. And that's something I want to leave you guys with here. Just a little food for thought. It's a little bit of a download of a transfer. Can torrent my brain a little bit. And get a little, get, just get a perspective of the world the way I see the world, which is a huge mismatch. I know my body likes to eat. I know my body likes to exercise. I know my body is vulnerable to the fact that if I see super, super tasty, delicious, highly flavored food, that my primal brain will crave that food and it's gonna look at that food as a reward 
while my prefrontal cortex, which is a lot smaller and a lot less powerful and depends on willpower, depends on self-control, won't be able to resist that fact that I want to get that food and I have to control my environment, I have to control my behavior, I have to play and I have to design my world, my life for success. And I have to set myself up for success because nobody else is going to set me up for success. And I can only hope for best. I'm not saying that the exercise or the nutrition is the end-all, be-all solution for every disease in the world. That's absolutely not correct. This is not a black and white type of thinking. But if you can do something and at least have a chance for reducing all these potential negative side effects that might just get you when you're in your 50s and your 60s and your 70s instead of the time that you're going to spend with your grandkids, you're going to be in a hospital. I think it's worth investing a little bit of time and just thinking about it a little bit, right? So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, let me know in the comments below how this resonated with you. And um, if you'd like to hear more videos that are more in depth on this topic, if you really want to uh, get a complete kind of foundation of why I think we have been in this, we are in this situation right now and how we ended up here. Uh, let me know in the comments below and I will make that video. I'm gonna make it a very long, dense one for all of you guys, a lot of statistics. So hit me up in the comments below. Aside from that, hit that like button, hit that share button. If you think that uh, this message might help someone, I'm pretty sure it could help someone who's ready for that change. So hit that subscribe button as well, support the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.